death, die and bereavement in British culture, we don't talk about it very much, that we're frightened of it, that we don't know much about it. And this, um, for me, was really frustrating and I think really unhealthy. And it felt like just having a really simple and clear objective of creating conversations or a space for conversations was the only thing that we could do, really. That was the only realistic response. Pushing up daisies is radical community building in action and it's definitely the very first steps to a compassionate community. In the community where I work as a nurse, we constantly look to the specialist palliative care team for the lead, whereas actually I feel we can lead as citizens. And what I'm interested in is community engagement. So you're in the community, what do you want? How can we actually support you Pushing Up Daisy started in 2015 and there was something like 20 events, 21 events in the festival and this year there are over 70 and we've got event facilitators coming from Wales and Scotland and from down south and performers and people from around the town. Feeling utterly desperate and so sad. The thing about helping others is it makes you receptive and how much that helps your own process. I have understood, particularly through this process, since my terminal diagnosis, I have offered my difficulty and many people have come to me and said, oh, Steve, thank you for saying that, because I, I have something similar and I, I haven't been able to talk about it. So we're pushing on daisies. I've invited these guys to be the band. Mr. Wilson's second line is <laughs> Last year I already had my diagnosis. It has been a great help to me to be able to talk to people about the fact that I am going to die. It is not embarrassing or difficult because here in Todmorden we have it out in the open. This is the Pushing Up Daisies Festival and I welcome the chance to discuss issues around death. Not everybody agrees on things around death, but I think it's good to have the opportunity to bring it all out into the open. So it's like remembering of those people who've died. I lost my auntie, and when I came here it was like easier to accept that she'd gone. So I knew that she'd gone, but it was easier to accept and know that um, it's normal to have those feelings where you don't want to accept it. Hi, I'm Richard, Richard Parks. Um, I, th I think it's a great idea. I've been involved with a lot of this ever since it started, really. And um, I lost my son when he was only, uh, just after his teenage years, he was 21. So I think it's really important that we talk about death and communicate about it, because otherwise people bottle it up inside and, um, and you just lose the will to live yourself if you don't do something about it, yes. People used to walk across the road from me after my son died, be not because they didn't want to talk, because they didn't know what to say. So we've just got to keep trying to get it out there and to make that effort.
So as you can see, a very well laid out graveyard. It extends right around the back of the church. It's a very extensive graveyard indeed, by far the biggest. I've studied history for most of my life and I find the most meaningful sort of history is history that people can relate to, history that people can understand. I'm interested in what happens at the end of life so I take people to look at churches and graveyards. I hope it will make them think more about the graveyards um, at that level. I hope it will make them think a bit more about what's going to happen to them at their end of life. But also how they relate to other people who have died and how they've been um, affected and how they themselves can relate to those people and do, help them get over the grief. <laughs> okay, uh, that's it. I hope, you, I hope you've enjoyed that. I came to the first Pushing Up Daisies two years ago. Um, I was volunteered uh, by my niece who lives in Todmorden because she wanted me to come and talk about dementia and the way that people like us with dementia approach talking about death and dying. Dementia is a progressive illness. People with dementia is rather different because part of them is going to die before they actually die. Perhaps more important for us who have dementia is to make our plans, to make our wants known, to, to plan for the future while we still have the ability to do it. My name's Sally. I have a business called Kingfisher Flowers, which is growing flowers that are seasonal and natural, and I grow them organically. I'm kind of interested in that idea of providing flowers for, you know, sort of end of life and, and to say goodbye to people. One of the things is that when you're sort of connecting with flowers, you're connecting with nature really and the earth and it's a natural process and I mean I personally think because death's a natural process, it's a natural part of life, it kind of makes you look at a life cycle more. It kind of mirrors life in a way. Today somebody had a flower that she brought to make a bouquet that was a flower that she'd used to put in her, her husband's coffin a year ago when he died. So it's that sort of memorial and it's from one year to the next, like when that flower blooms again, you think about your loved one who you've lost and it kind of connects you with them really. Pushing Up Daisies is something that's there the whole time. The festival only lasts for a week, but the conversations last all the way through the year. So what we can do that hospitals and hospices can't do is have conversations before it's critical, before people are terrified, after people have died. So we're there all the time beforehand and all the time after, and people are ready at different times. We live in a community, we die in a community, and what we really want to do is get all, um, sort of festivals like Pushing Up Daisies to really think how can local people support each other, um, whether that's when they're caring for somebody who's dying or when, uh, when they're actually bereaved, because it can be really isolating and be very challenging. So what we actually really need to do is think how can hospices, hospitals and the local community work together. And we need to be really creative about how we do that so that we can all have the have the support when, we, when, it's, when it's our time to die and support our, our relatives. Loneliness is, is the modern epidemic that's killing people in the Western world and one of the loneliest times in a person's life is when they're suffering from loss, bereavement or somebody's at the end of their life. So the idea that people in our community are dying alone 
be shocking. So we really want to do everything we can to combat loneliness. I think um, probably in the last 50 years as, as citizens, we've handed death over to health professionals and to funeral directors really. So we've become less and less capable um, or emotionally or practically equipped to know what to do when somebody's dying. Over 70% of people say they'd like to die at home, but less than 20% do that. So if we are to support people to die in the way they want, at home, in familiar surroundings, with people who love them, then we have to work in a different way. Death is natural and we need to reach out to each other. Death is everyone's business and that is the beauty of pushing up daisies. We are making it everyone's business.